Well, you're mentioning how Linus is kind of like this this voice of reason. He's it. I, everyone sort of knows, like over the years, he's very much, uh, I guess, smoothened out. We'll say the the way he he interacts with people in the Colonel, because you know, you you go back to like. 90s Linus, early 2000s. Like, we've all seen the early emails that have flown around in that thread that were just, like, absolutely tearing people apart, like, just cursing them out, like, what are you even doing in this project? Like, get out. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you... I, I don't know if you remember when uh, there was, like, Rust support being uh, considered for the Colonel. Um, but back when that first got introduced... There was a line of code, and it was it was it should not have been. They were using the standard Rust library, and if something went wrong, it like threw a, a panic like in kernel space, which is like no. And Linus yeah. responded like, "This cannot be here. Like, what are you doing?" <laughs> it, but like it was, it's a lot more tame than it would have been. Like you know, absolutely, I was cursing them out, like w- all crazy things. Um, I, I think, you know, th- I get why people didn't like the way Linus used to act. It makes a lot of sense. But I, I, th- I feel like there is some sort of benefit there having someone that is going to, like, someone there needs to be separate and have that sort of oversight of what people are doing. You can't just let, you know, you can't just let people just blindly do what they're doing, especially on a project as big as the Colonel. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, you know, if there were ever a project where you want, people not to make like horrible mistakes that's in the kernel, right? Because everybody has to deal with your problem if you do that. And yeah, like the panic thing, you know, it, it, it's it, the person, unfortunately that that's indicative of somebody that doesn't really have experience with kernel work, right? Like you, you can't do that. You can't just throw your hands up and like panic in the kernel. It's a very different environment. The, the kernel should never crash ever, 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 unless there's an actual bug in which case, okay, fine. You like limp to the finish line and crash. Um, I think, yeah, you know, you need to have real standards, right? Like, like the, one of the, one of the nice things about the kernel is that there's no manager, like you don't have to report to anybody. Um, I mean, there, there are people that work in the kernel that have managers, so they, I guess they still have to kind of watch what they say, but it's, um, yeah, no, like many, many people don't work at the same company. And I think Linus having that sort of like, like you just can't BS him and like, he won't let bad stuff in. Mm -hmm. It's a good culture. It's, it's a good, it's a good culture to hand down to the maintainers and have them apply it in their own ways. Um, I do think that, yeah, you know, he's, 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 he does like, he is very direct in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. I think also he's like way humbler than I think I would be if I were in his position, like essentially like, essentially like as influential as Bill Gates or like, steve jobs or whatever right Mm -hmm. and he just kind of chills in portland and just like just like does code reviews for the colonel just kind of crazy um but he's so i'll give him credit for that i will say my personal opinion is that i think colonel work is a little bit too um the community could be way more inviting to people i think Mm -hmm. there's there's definitely a mystique of like this is this is like elite stuff and yada 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 I really believe that at the end of the day, it's just software and you just ha- you kind of just have to understand like what you're working, the area you're working in and then just build stuff like you would anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Maybe not just like you would, but it's pretty similar. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that, that like culture of publicly shaming people kind of also has that effect. Right. And you know, the effect ends up being that you filter out people that shouldn't be there by any means and people that really would, would provide value. And, um, at the end of the day, you know, the kernel has been successful. And I think, uh, I think, even if we have filtered out people that that would would have actually been great members of the community, clearly it hasn't like hamstrung us, right? Like it's still a great kernel. So the kernel is just this. It's this weird project, right? Like you know, just the fact that there's a mailing list you have to get involved with. There's the like the the bugzilla, which is kind of official, kind of not. There's some there's some maintainers that don't even like the bugzilla exists. Uh, I, I I've seen giant mailing list discussions arguing about the existence of the bugzilla. Um, just just the fact the mailing list is there, like, that in itself is this weird thing that a lot of people just don't really have experience with. You know, Fedora has a mailing list, for example, and Ubuntu has theirs as well, but, you know, if you're involved in just general user space stuff, typically the way you interact with a project is through, like, a GitHub or a GitLab bug tracker. So having to go through this, like, weird thing that you probably never used, and then there's, like, specific etiquette on how you interact on the mailing list and all of this stuff... 
I I get why it's confusing. And the fact that it's the kernel, right? Like it it's this giant project with a million. I, I don't know how many lines of code it has now. Pro, like uh, definitely over, millions. Yeah, millions yeah. of. I, some will find the exact number and tell me what it is. Um, it's a very big project, and it can be hard to. Even on something smaller, like a, a desktop environment, it's hard to find like where your piece fits in. Like, What can you add to it? And I can only imagine that problem is even worse on the kernel. Once you're in there and you know that you can change it, I'm sure it's a lot easier to like work out what you can do there. But like just getting that first step in the door, I could imagine being really, really difficult. It is. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, you know, it's interesting because the whole mailing list thing, I think probably more than anything else is actually the biggest filter to people participating. And I think, I don't know if this is true or not, but I have to imagine that's kind of by design, but yeah, it, it's, it's a little bit wonky. Like you do, you email people patches. Um, they reply to your email with code reviews and then eventually either they get dropped or the maintainer takes your patch that you emailed them and like merges it to their local repo and then eventually sends it to Linus and Linus merges it to his, his repo, which is the actual like, <laughs> upstream kernel it's a really weird model um yeah it's 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 uh but you know it, it works well um i think if it is really hard to get started for sure uh you have to you have to first of all learn a lot of like low level stuff like how do i even test how do i build the kernel how do i test it um how do i configure it in the way that i want to test it oh i have to like add this kconfig option to like compile 9p so that i can mount a lo a host file system and then like run tests. I mean, it's really complicated. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's that part of it, like the, the mailing list part and the, 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 like getting your rig set up kind of thing. Honestly, it's like probably a couple of weeks. I, I actually wrote a blog post on how to do the mailing list part. if anybody, um, wants to get involved to me, the, the, um, the, uh, the best thing that you can do if you do want to get involved is to just do code reviews do like actual real substantive code reviews. Um, you know, if you, if, if there's an area that you're interested in like MM or, or BPF or whatever, just follow, follow the mailing list and kind of try to keep track of what people are doing, like read their, their patch, their cover letters, which describe the feature, try to understand how it works. And then when you start doing real code reviews and you can some, maybe submit some bugs and fix some few things like that, then you're kind of in the, in the groove, you know, and, and in, in that regard, it's not that dissimilar, I think, from from any other project, but it is bigger for sure. And you have to you have to just find a little piece of it and kind of like follow that piece and sort of start to build your your repertoire from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I, I have to say this as well. Don't if you want to send a patch to the kernel, you can definitely send like a documentation fix up or like a grammar or, or whatever fix up. Please don't do that more than once, maybe twice. There there are people that send nothing but like moving commas around and like fixing spelling and stuff and like everybody knows who they are and everybody is like like eye roll like come on like please stop like it's so you know it's cool to have your it's obviously awesome to have your name in the kernel but um mm -hmm. but i think it's 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 uh the community kind of expects people that participate to have a substantive ability to participate and um mm -hmm. and you know like provide code value at the end of the day Right, that is that is understandable. I, the, the documentation one is weird because, like, someone you know, I, I I get wanting it to be like a substantive change, and I don't know, it, it it's weird, right? Like, because you see an issue with the documentation, and you do want it to be fixed, even if it's like a fairly minor one. But I I can get it from from that perspective as well, where it, especially if you are doing it a lot, like. It's yeah. I mean, it, look, it's, it's value. I think it's, I personally think it's valuable for sure. Like, mm -hmm. especially if you're looking at a subsystem and you're like, doc, you're actually documenting it. Like, right. Right. Sure. Yeah. And there, so like, yeah, there, there's like a documentation subdirectory in the like a subtree in the kernel where like everything is documented and you know, BPF has a whole bunch of stuff that could be better documented. Like, please feel free. I will act it. It'll, it'll land. I promise you that. What I was talking about was more like people who, like we'll fix a typo or like move like puncture like fix grammar it is like i do think it's valuable mm -hmm. but people know that you're just doing it to like get your patches in you know and it's it does have a cost because you do have to have like people with very limited bandwidth review these things and whatever mm -hmm. but uh but yeah i mean it's 
I, it's hard to describe like some of the people that do this also like will like engage in code reviews like kind of con like in a confrontational way and be like you need to document this and it's like you know what no <laughs> you have no you have no right to, to de demand anything of me at all um you know so yeah i, I don't want to mis misrepresent anything um mm -hmm. it's good it's it's fine it's good work i like again i think it's valuable it's just you're dealing with people that are that are kind of cynical by default mm -hmm. and they're not going to assume good intent if like you're, you keep doing it you know they're right. just going to assume that you're like an attention wannabe whatever